Good day, sports fans. I'm Carlo Valdez. And I'm Edwin Vergara. And we're coming to you from New Jersey. Welcome to this week's EBC Sports International. Here's the headlines for today's episode. Real Madrid face Atletico Madrid in one of the oldest soccer rivalries. Ellis says goodbye to U.S. Women's World Cup team. Fans go to bat for Las Vegas Aviators. Egan Bernal is the first Colombian to win Tour de France. Canelo Alvarez loses IBF belt after title defense deal collapses. Plus, elite Canadian figure skaters let loose on Stars on Ice. You know it's good to see soccer growing in popularity here in the States. That's true. Although it's been popular throughout the world for many decades already, some might say that here in the U.S. it finally hit the mainstream. That is very true. And you are not only a big fan, but a soccer player as well. I don't play professionally, but I do play the sport. That's why I enjoyed covering this match between Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid and speaking with fellow soccer fans. Here's my report. Hello everybody and welcome. We're here at the MetLife Stadium in Secaucus, New Jersey to witness one of the world's oldest soccer rivalries, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. Actually, I feel kind of disappointed because I would expect at least like three or two goals difference, but it's about six goals difference, which is a big deal. And I know it's a friendly game. It's only a few players that are trying out, but still they should try more, harder, you know. Most likely they are still on vacation. I mean, they are trying to come out with the, uh, more plays, but also they have to play with new, with new players, so they have to get used to. It's going to take a little while to get used to. What do you think the final score is going to be tonight? Oh my god. 6-5, 6-5, 6-5. So you think Madrid is going to Yeah, catch four up? more goals. So yeah. Four more goals? Yeah, four more goals. Okay. I think that they didn't do their best. I don't know because I think Marcelo and all the other players that were like on the field did really good, but I don't think the goalie even like tried. Yeah. I think the goalie was like goalie. he needs to put some well, more in work. The first in. half the goalie was trash. It was not good. Hello everybody and we're back with the final score. Atletico Madrid scored seven goals. Real Madrid scored three tonight. This rivalry game was excellent. It had a lot of high passion, a lot of high intensity, a lot of high scoring. There was even a couple of penalty kicks at the end. Real Madrid tried to rally back in the second half but they just didn't have enough to make it. Thank you for watching everyone. My name is Edwin Vergara and I am one with 25. We are one with 25. Looks like you had a lot of fun, Edwin. Definitely. Soccer fans are among the most passionate. Yeah, something I noticed though is it's not only the traditional middle-aged male that are among the crowd, but also there were a lot of girls enjoying the game. Not only enjoying, Carlo, they were analyzing the performance of the players. Yes, I noticed that and the awareness of the young girls about soccer might be attributed to the recent victory of the U.S. women's soccer team in the World Cup. Which brings us to our next news item. Women's soccer. U.S. soccer announced that two-time women's World Cup champion coach Jill Ellis will say farewell to the United States national team on October 6th after a match against South Korea. Two days after, Ellis revealed she was stepping down after the U.S. Women's Victory Tour. The Federation announced the final games of the five-match exhibition. Series would both be against South Korea on October 3rd at Charlotte, North Carolina and three days later at Chicago's Soldier Field. Ellis guided the U.S. women to the 2015 crown in Canada and masterminded the American women's title run this year, which concluded with a 2-0 victory over the Netherlands on July 7th in France. 
Ellis took the job May 2014. When we return, fans go to bat for Las Vegas Aviators. Egan Bernal is the first Colombian to win Tour de France. Canelo loses IBF belt after title defense deal collapses. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back, this is EBC Sports International. We're coming to you from New Jersey. Thanks for staying with us, and now for more sports news. I mentioned earlier the passion that soccer fans have for the game, but this support from fans can be seen in many sports. Here in the US, the American pastime is considered baseball. Mm -hmm. And for baseball fans, there's nothing better than going out to the ballpark and rooting for the home team. In Las Vegas, the fans went up to bat for the Las Vegas Aviators by expressing how much they love the minor league club. Brian Sanson with the story. The Vegas sun can deter the average visitor from being outside, but for the Las Vegas Aviator fans, it's literally a ball at the park. Show me with the hands how big of an aviator I'm a really big fan, actually. <laughs> Should I hit him in the face? <laughs> I just like baseball in general, yeah. so I like watching baseball. I think it's a cool sport because it's slower, so it lasts a little bit longer. Kind of just chill, like, I don't know. I just like it. So yeah, I'm excited. It's like a summer sport. It yeah. is. Fans have been watching the Aviators long before they even came to be, previously known as the Las Vegas 51s. Were you a fan of the 51s? Yes. I was actually a really big fan because my brothers, they had played baseball and it was I was always surrounded by it. And I played when I was younger. So of course, it's a big impact about, like among everyone to be involved in the sport, especially in between um, when they're cleaning the field, especially when they get everyone involved. It's That's the best. The, the 51s before they became the Oh, Indians? absolutely. Um, I've been a fan of actually the 51s for about 15 years now. So most of my life, I've been a 51s fan. So I'm excited to have these guys here now with a beautiful brand new ballpark and everything. People have rejoiced over first baseman Seth Brown, who had just recently won the Player of the Week award, deservedly being a fan favorite. Who is your favorite aviator player? I want to say Seth Brown. Seth Brown? Because it's just he's a big power hitter and especially he just creates a big impact on the team. Because you always need a power hitter, you need the big ones. For the fourth, you need different size hitters. And I feel like he makes a big impact, especially. Um, who is your favorite NBA player? Seth Brown, of Seth course. Seth Brown, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Why, though? Why Seth Brown? We like to watch balls fly. <laughs> yeah, he's just, a, he's just a fun and exciting player to, to watch out there on the field. And to some fan surprise, and no surprise to others, the Aviators have had record attendance, even beating major league teams like the Miami Marlins. Wow. Yeah, that's actually pretty shocking. That's impressive. Yeah. It is. It is. But, I, feel, I feel like especially for Vegas, because yeah. we like are newer to having like Vegas-based teams, so I feel like that's pretty... Especially with yeah, the team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah, it's super hot. A lot of people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but here they are. It's great though, it's great, especially because Vegas is um, usually like gaming and all that, so it's nice to have some sports here. Yeah. Again, it's it's something to do with everyone coming together, especially after what happened at the Mandalay Bay, especially that. And I feel like this just brings everyone together as a community. And it's just a, it's just a big deal. A new ballpark, a facelift on the brand, and a loyal fan base is just enough to set the Aviators on a course for a bright future. If you don't believe me, just ask the fans. From the Las Vegas ballpark in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, I am Brian Sanson for Eagle News, one with 25. Thanks, Brian. It's nice to see that Vegas is embracing minor league baseball. One day, we'll see the players in the minors hitting it in the big show. Major League Baseball. Yeah, that's right, Carlo. And in the world of cycling, there's no bigger stage than the Tour de France, 
where Egan Bernal was the first ever Colombian to win the prestigious race. Take a look. Espero lo disfruten mucho porque es nuestro primer Tour de Francia. La verdad es que yo estoy contento, pero siento que, que no es solo mío, es, es de Colombia. Es de Colombia, tenemos mucha historia. On est vraiment tous très fiers de la victoire, pas, pas que de Camerlal, on est fiers aussi de nos, les autres cyclistes, Enrico Berto, Nairo. Ils sont, sont bien montrés un peu les, les, les bons côtés de la, de la communauté colombienne. Et franchement, on est tous très fiers de tout ce qu'ils ont fait, tout ce qu'ils ont reçu. In other news, promoter Oscar De La Hoya revealed that middleweight world champion Canelo Alvarez has been stripped of his International Boxing Federation belt after failing to agree terms on a mandatory title defense against Ukraine's Sergei Derevajenko. A furious De La Hoya said, quote, We are extremely disappointed at the IBF for forcing the world's best fighter to relinquish his world title. De La Hoya added, quote, But instead, they wanted to force us to relinquish Canelo's belt. This is an insult to boxing and more importantly, an insult to the boxing fans of the world. Alvarez, who won the IBF belt in May after beating Daniel Jacobs in 12 rounds, had been expected to fight Detra Vyjenko in October. When we come back, elite Canadian figure skaters let loose on Stars on Ice. Stay tuned for more EBC Sports International. Welcome back. You're watching EBC Sports International. I'm Carlo Valdez. I'm Edwin Vergara. Thank you for tuning in. To wrap up our episode, let's cool down this hot summer by hitting the ice. That's exactly what the elite figure skaters did. They took a break from the high stress of competitive skating and enjoyed performing in front of an adoring audience in Canada. Here's a story. Jumps, spins, lifts, and glides on ice are just some of the moves of a professional figure skater. <laughs> figure skating has become one of the most popular and oldest sport in the Olympic Winter Games. This time, however, it's not the Olympic Games, but the Stars on Ice, a theatrical show featuring Canadian Olympic medalists and elite figure skaters and champions performing together and skate in exhibitions all in one show. Yeah, so Stars on Ice has been around for many, many years, only over 30 years. Um, it was started by Scott Hamilton, who is an Olympic champion and world champion uh, for the United States. It's been kind of the staple for skaters who are just coming off either still currently competing or have just retired like myself. It's kind of the cream of the crop when it comes to competitive skaters watching them on the professional side on a more show exhibition type environment. Uh, so it's a little more of an interactive experience for the audience. This year's Stars on Ice includes professional figure skaters, most of whom were 2018 Olympic medalists, including Canadian legend, Olympic gold and silver medalists, three-time world champion and 10-time Canadian champion Patrick Chan, Olympic gold, silver and bronze medalist Caitlin Osmond, Olympic medalist pair Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford, and two-time Olympic silver medalist Elvis Stoiko. 
Also featured in the show are world silver medalist Canadian duo Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Poco, world champion Kurt Browning, and Canadian champion Nam Nguyen. We have a lot of great songs. We have group numbers and then our individual numbers. That's kind of unique to Stars on Ice. It's a, an opportunity for us to skate to music we wouldn't typically skate to, um, let's say, for example, in a competitive environment. But now you have the opportunity to really grow yourself by ch picking different, different types of style um, and, and music. The show delivers the same level of excitement and artistry to the audience, but for a professional figure skater like Patrick Chan, who has been skating from when he was this high, here's what he says about skating in exhibitions versus competitions. The main difference between doing Stars on Ice or any professional show compared to competing is your level of expectation uh, is a lot more reasonable. Uh, you don't have as much pressure, you don't have judges sitting on one side of the arena judging you and your performance. Performance. No one is checking off jumps that you're missing or that you're landing properly. So there's a lot more liberty and you can actually spend the time to connect with the audience. You get to have a moment with them, which you typically wouldn't have in competition. The Stars on Ice in Canada offers Canadians a rare opportunity to witness live figure skating and watch professional figure skaters, which is normally seen only during competitions and championships. Reporting from Rogers Arena in Vancouver, I am Ansel Morano, one with 25. We've reached the end of another episode of EBC Sports International. Thank you for staying with us throughout this program. Make sure you join us next week for more sports news. But before then, visit our websites at www.eaglenews.net and at www.eaglenewslive.com. Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Eagle News and on Twitter at twitter.com slash Eagle News. Thanks for watching. I am Carlo Valdez. And I'm Edwin Vergara. And we, we are, are one with 25. 25.